now you're good. Well, welcome everyone, whether you're joining us live or watching recording, we are so glad that you have joined us to learn about Holland, Holland America's Grand Voyages. These allow you to see so many parts of the world without those long overseas flights. So it is truly the world just from your doorstep. And we are Suzanne and Steve Clausen, and we are joined by Amanda Ward. Say hi, Amanda. Hello, everybody. She's, Hello. She is our representative from Holland America, and she'll be assisting us with our presentation today. So just to give you a little bit of the agenda, um, we are going to share with you what makes Holland America one of the best cruise lines to cruise with. And then we're also going to talk about how they are a leader in cuisine, entertainment, destination immersion. Then we'll dive into the Grand Voyage itineraries, and those are pretty long, so we're going to kind of zip through those. And then we'll have some special offers for our Zoom attendees at the very end. Um, when Steve and I started our agency 11 years ago, we set out to provide the highest level of personalized vacation planning and meaningful vacation experiences for our clients. Uh, we use our own vast travel experience to help curate customized, well-planned travel experiences for a client. We measure our success on how you ultimately enjoy the vacation experience. So we take our roles as your travel advisors very seriously. Uh, we work on your behalf. We use our training experience to guide your decisions. We know that, that you know, Every cruise line is not a good fit for everyone, so we take a consultative approach and want to make sure that we're planning the best vacation for you. Um, we are easily accessible. You can text me, you can phone me, you can email me. And one thing you, you need to know is that you will never, ever, ever pay more booking through our travel agency than you would if you booked directly with the cruise line. And you get all the added services of having a knowledgeable, experienced, certified travel professional on your side, making sure that every aspect of your, your, of your vacation is being ta taken care of and attended to. But don't just believe me. These are a couple of my recent reviews. Uh, I invite you to Google Suzanne Clausen Cruise One and read my reviews and see if you feel like my business model would be a good fit for you. I really strive to please my clients and provide that extra attentive, superlative customer service to every single one of my guests. So now I am going to turn it over to Amanda Ward with Holland America, and she is going to tell us a little bit about the Holland American cruise experience. Thank you, Suzanne. So I'm very excited to be here with you guys today. Working with Suzanne and Steve is an absolute pleasure. They have an unbelievable wealth of knowledge. They're incredible partners with us. And so I always get very excited to work with them, help talk about Holland America, and just kind of share what great experiences we have. Today, we're really going to talk about some neat itineraries that are Product managers have put together. It's wonderful because we have a lot of new ones, a lot of popular ones that have come back to celebrate our 150th anniversary, which is this year as well. So an incredible, incredible history that we've had throughout the years, just bringing in one out of every 10 immigrants through Ellis Island, bringing over people like Albert Einstein, uniting families, bringing people together. It's really a fantastic, fantastic product with an incredible history. So I will start with talking about the experience of a Holland America vacation, what it's like being on board, and what we have put as our priority when our clients are sailing. So we like to say that our cruise line is a premium cruise line that's for explorers, booties, and music lovers. This really sums it up because we want to make sure that your vacation has plenty of freedom and flexibility to allow you to do as much or as little as you would like and really bring some of these amazing features like getting to see the world, like getting to enjoy new and delicious cuisine and having music really bring you together on a vacation. So a really fantastic way. So let's take a look at how that breaks down for us when you're on board. So food, food is so important. 
getting to try new cuisine, not having to cook, not having to clean, just getting out there and having a fantastic meal. This is something that we put as one of our top priorities on board our ships. There's going to be a variety of different opportunities and restaurants and venues for you to take advantage of when you are on board. So what we have done is we have actually partnered with our culinary council. Our culinary council is a council of six chefs. And what they have done is they have partnered with us to make sure that our menu is really bringing something special and unique to the table. They helped with the pairings, the menus, even the decor within the restaurants. So they are the ones that have really given us a lot of great feedback, a lot of neat ideas, especially helping us when we're looking at in the Lido and being sustainable and allowing you to have some of the best food. For example, in our Lido, we do not have a, a buffet style. Everything is made to order, making sure you're getting the freshest and best meals available. We have pop-up restaurants, our specialty restaurants like Rudy's, uh, Celle de Mer, French seafood restaurant, or Pinnacle Grill bringing you a lovely curtain of bacon and a delicious key lime pie. So everything has so much thought put into it, and it's one of our proudest features is our food on board the ship. And don't forget the other venues like the pizza place and the dive-in for oh, casual eating. They are delicious too. Exactly. And included in the fair. So all of those are included, which is fantastic. Only the specialty restaurants and the gelato on our Pinnacle class ships are additional. So it really is a fantastic, fantastic, inclusive pricing. Music. Music is so important to us. I know I listen to music all the time. It corresponds with your mood. It can make the evening better. It can really bring the ship to life in the evening. And so we have partnered with a number of really great companies and artists that really bring the ship to life in the evening. We have our BB King's Blues Lounge, our Billboard on Board, which is our dueling pianos. We've partnered with the BBC uh, Earth to give you some presentations, really allowing you to immerse yourself in the destination when you're visiting. And of course, the Rolling Stone Rock Room, which is one of our most popular, popular venues. Really getting to see some of these incredible artists participate in singing music that they love, partnering with our dance company that's on board, really getting to see this come alive, getting to participate with the Billboard on Board pianists as well, getting to choose songs, picking different songs for the evening. They do different themes. It's such a wonderful way to not only get to know other passengers on the ship, but really just have a lot of fun. So it's yeah. fantastic to see everybody come together. I know, Suzanne, you have some really great stories about the oh, entertainment. Oh, I know. And one of the one of the things I like the best is how the venues just kind of flow one to the other. They're all right next to each other. And like the billboard on board and the Rolling Stone Rock Room will take turns doing sets. So so you you get to listen to both of them. And of course, um, we loved uh, the the dueling piano, not really dueling pianos, the pianist that plays all requests. And we kept requesting George Strait, George Strait. And finally, she played George Strait. And then um, and then all of a sudden, the, the Rolling Stone rock band starts playing across the room and they're playing the cars. And I'm like a kid of the 80s, like, it's my favorite band. I had to get up and go dance. And um, I just, I love that the music and I love the way that it flows that where you don't have to walk around, explore all around the ship to find the music venue. It's all right there. And you can just go from one to the other, which is really, really a nice way to set up the, the entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think another great thing about Holland America is the size of our ships. So we have what we call mid-sized ships, which is the perfect mixture of having a ship that's big enough to give you all those different restaurant venues, to give you the different music venues, to still have a gym and a spa, to have multiple pools, just so much to do on board, but also keeping the size small enough for you to have some incredible itineraries, less tendering, and get to see some really unique places. This is a fantastic, fantastic feature with Holland America. It also will really help when we're taking a look at the service, which we'll talk about a little later. So I want to point out to you a little bit about those specific ships. So we only have 11 ships as well. So it's easy to kind of get a full view and a big 
overview picture of what the ships are like. And I wanted to point this out because there are so many options with our itineraries, especially our round trip North America itineraries, which we're going to really dive into later. But because our ships range from 1,400 to 2,600 passengers, we can really get in there and see so much. Our, our smaller ships can go through the older locks in the Panama Canal. We even have our uh, pinnacle class ships that can get down into the Amazon, which Suzanne definitely pointed out because that's such a great feature. So, so many opportunities. Getting into Canada and New England, you get to go into places like Prince Edward Island that other ships can just not get into. So you can see that we've really kept these ships at a very specific size for that reason, to make sure it's intimate, to make sure you're still getting those features, but to also be able to travel to unique and different places. Yeah, and when it comes to cruise ships, bigger isn't always better. Sometimes that more intimate experience makes all the difference. It really does, because you will be able to see the difference with our crew and staff on board the ship. The service that they're able to provide because our ships are smaller, they are able to really get to know the passengers. I can't tell you how many times clients come back and talk about how they became friends with the servers in the dining room or their cabin steward, or they would show up at the ocean bar before dinner and they knew exactly what drink they wanted right before dinner. It's wonderful to hear these stories because those are the experiences that we really remember when we come back from our vacation, because they help us just have a fantastic time. And that's what a smaller ship and Holland America with the history we have can bring. I talked about a lot of the partnerships that we've done, and I also want to mention that we are continuing to add those partnerships. One of the ones we are most excited about is adding pickleball, one of the fastest growing sports. We have added pickleball to many of our ships already, and we'll be continuing to add those just so that you can get out there. We actually have some activity uh, members of our team who are going to be out there giving trainings giving tips and tricks and just making sure you guys are being able to have a great time in the daytime when the sun's shining, in the night when you're listening to music, whatever the case may be, you're going to have so many opportunities on board our ship. So we are going to talk about these wonderful round trip itineraries. But I do just want to mention to you quickly that we have a variety of itineraries that go all over the world. So on our legendary itineraries, just to point out to you real quick, just to show you the variety of itineraries that we have out here. Some of the ones on here are going to be what we talk about today, but just so you can really see that we go all, all over the world. We can really take you to knock off those places off your bucket list. So if we don't talk about one that you may be interested in today, definitely reach out to Suzanne and Steve and let them know because we are going to talk about some nice ones that you don't have to have the airfare but let's say you have some credits or miles and you want to get out there, let us know because we have so many great itineraries for you to take a look at. Ready to see the world. So grab your passports. We're going to dive into these amazing itineraries. And again, it's like we said, they allow you to see the world from your doorstep. Our first featured itinerary, and this is one of the most unique ones, it takes you across the Atlantic to Europe. You go to North Africa, Egypt, and the Holy Land, and it's all round trip from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, it takes you to some of the most remarkable places in Italy, which is one of my favorite places to visit. I love the pasta, the seafood, the ancient history, the architecture, the art. Um, and you'll go to small intimate ports like Portofino. You'll be, visit the eternal city of Rome, and you'll see a lot of other highlights of Italy on this itinerary. You can view or climb the, climb the Acropolis in Athens, the birthplace of democracy. So what better place to kind of visit and get that, that history, history from? Um, there's also important sites in the Holy Land that this cruise visits. You have a chance to visit Jerusalem and Nazareth. And if ancient history and the wonders of the worlds are something that you're interested, you can visit the pyramids of Giza or the um, Egyptian Museum in Cairo, 
with all of its ancient artifacts and wonders. Uh, Cairo is accessible both from the port of Alexandra and Port Said. The cruise also visits Spain and the Azores, and that's actually my own picture from the Azores on the, on the left there. And the ship will also visit Casablanca, where you can see it's really splendid Moorish architecture um, for another amazing, you know, kind of world traveler experience. And then it heads back to Fort Lauderdale. So it is truly a round trip uh, experience. Uh, the starting price here is based on per person double occupancy. It's under $7,000 a person for a 42 day cruise with no long haul flights. So it really is a tremendous value if you've been wanting to see Europe and you just don't wanna take that long haul flight. Maybe you don't wanna splurge for the first class tickets you know, which can be four to five thousand dollars a person. Look at you could you can almost to Europe um, and back for the price of the air. So very, very good value for this for this particular cruise. So the next cruise we're going to talk about is the 24-day Canada, Greenland, and Iceland. And my husband and my husband Steve and I actually took this in August of last year. And we can speak from personal Little experience Viking. that yeah, it, it is one of the most amazing itineraries that Holland America offers. Uh, you visit coming and going, you visit the Canadian Maritimes. And this is a part of Canada that we had never been to before. We love the rich culture, the friendly folks, the dramatic scenery. It was, it was just beautiful. Here's a look at Grossmore National Park in Canada. This one of the amazing things we saw on that cruise. We also visited Halifax, Nova Scotia, where they embrace their Scottish heritage, all the tour guides that we had uh, that day were wearing kilts. Uh, St. John's, Newfoundland is home of one of the most beautiful Irish Catholic cathedrals in North America, as well as an assortment of beautifully painted, colorful Victorian buildings. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for scenic sail away. There were so many times we just sat out on the back of the ship and watched watched us sail away. This is sailing away from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Really, really a beautiful, beautiful day. Next, we got to visit Greenland and you visit these two little quaint villages in Greenland. You have the people there live a very simple life. They have a very true sense of community and cultural heritage. About 89% of the population of Greenland, Greenland is Inuit. So they have that, that rich heritage of being this area and living off the land and the, the, uh, the natural wildlife for years and years. Um, there also is a little mix of Danish, Nordic and, and other people in Greenland, but it's mostly Inuit. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this cruise was the opportunity to sail through Prince Christian Sound. It was, obviously we had a spectacular day as far as weather, but the, it was something out of a fairy tale. Um, we had picturesque little villages that looked like they'd been built by gnomes, these enormous glaciers and these glacierly carved mountains. It was absolutely stunning. Very, very much the best part of this cruise as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the glaciers made for some of the most dramatic scenery that I've ever seen. Uh, the cruise is worth it also, I think, just for the opportunity to visit Iceland. This was my second visit to Iceland. Uh, the combination of fire from the geothermal areas of Iceland and the ice from the glaciers make for some of the most dramatic scenery you will ever see. Uh, this is the Gullafoss waterfall. Uh, if you take the Golden Circle tour just outside of Reykjavik, uh, this is one of the things that you'll get to see on that tour. Uh, we did a whale watching tour in Reykjavik. We also climbed, walked up to this uh, beautiful waterfall in Sedisa Fjord. We visited the Zip. I can't even say the name. Do you <laughs> Their names are so funny. They're very hard to say if you don't speak uh, Icelandic. And there's so many opportunities during that cruise to sail through scenic fjords. I, there were so many times that we just sat outside on the back of the ship and watched the scenery go by as we were sailing away. Very, very beautiful, beautiful scenery. So there is that 24-day cruise, which starts and ends in Boston, and it circles Iceland. But there's also a 35-day voyage of the Vikings. It's also Boston round trip. 
but it's even more extensive. Uh, it includes Ireland. And these are some pictures of my own pictures of Ireland when I visited in 2019. And you get to visit on this cruise, the Belfast area, Dublin and Cork. And this is a picture of St. Kevin's Monastery, one of the earliest Christian settlements in all of Ireland, which, we, which is just outside of Dublin, something you can see on that cruise. It also includes Rotterdam, Netherlands, and a visit to um, Eidfjord in Norway. So by doing that 35-day cruise, you get the addition of Ireland, Netherlands, and Norway to that fabulous itinerary. Look, you can see the two itineraries side by side. And again, I have the lead-in pricing for the ocean view category. Um, of course, it's going to be more if you're going to do a balcony or a suite and less if you're going to do an inside cabin. But you can choose for either one, and it's just going to be the experience of a lifetime. Now, if you're into a little bit warmer weather, uh, we've got a cruise that's going to take you to a little bit more tropical climate. So there's two options in 2024 that visit uh, the Polynesian Islands. So you visit Hawaii on both of these, you visit French Polynesia, and the 51-day option includes the Fiji Islands. You'll visit four of the Hawaiian Islands, including Honolulu, uh, Hilo, which is on the Big Island, and then Maui and Kauai. You also maybe when you're in Hilo, want to go visit Volcanoes National Park. Uh, Kilauea being is active too. Yeah, I know Kilauea is erupting right now. So it is the longest active volcano, I think, in history. And it has a very interesting uh, pattern. So it's very, it's somewhat predictable. It's very interesting. Um, so Volcanoes National Park, when you're in Honolulu, Honolulu, you might want to pause and remember the sacrifices of our greatest generation with a visit to Pearl Harbor. Or maybe you just want to soak up the sun and the surf on Waikiki Beach. These are all things that you can do in Oahu. Um, also on Hawaii, Oahu is the most popular attraction in all of Hawaii, it's the Polynesian Cultural Center. And here you can go visit villages that, that are representations of villages that display Hawaiian, Tahitian, Maori, Marquesian, Rapa Nui, and Tongan cultures and more. So very interesting if you want to learn, learn more about Polynesians. Uh, if the surf is up, you might head up to the North Shore uh, to catch maybe some, some whales or some surfers up there. And then depending on which journey you take, you'll either visit the old whaling town of Lahaina or Kahului, which was once home to vast sugarcane plantations. Um, while you're there in Maui, you might want to take maybe that, that road to Hana tour. It is one of the most scenic drives in the world. Kauai's the Garden Isle. It's known for its beautiful beaches, and it also is home of the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, Waimea Canyon. In French Polynesia, you will find the rich culture of the Tah Tahitians, who are the ancestors of the Hawaiians. So it really does tie that whole culture together to visit both islands on the same cruise. Uh, this is actually my own picture that I took from Tahiti when we were doing a sunset cruise, and that is the island of Morea that you see in the background. They're very close together. There's actually a ferry that goes between the two uh, several times a day. On the 51 day cruise, you'll get to visit the Lagoon Island of Bora Bora. And this is one of those famous overwater bungalow hotels that Bora Bora is known for. Both itineraries feature Nuka Hiva, which is one of the Marchesas Islands. Um, it's so pristine. And it's one of the least visited of the Polynesian islands. So really a chance to connect to nature. Again, on that 51 day cruise, you'll visit several of the Fiji islands. And I'm a big fan of Survivor. I don't think I've missed a season in the last couple seasons have maybe 10 to 15 seasons have been filmed in, in Fiji because of the unspoiled beauty of the, those islands there. So really a beautiful place to visit. So either cruise is a fantastic choice if you're wanting to visit the islands of Polynesian. Both are really great values when you figure how many days you're on the cruise. Um, I've priced out the two cruises as ocean view. 
The coning stem would feature balconies in standard cabin level, so not just in suites. So if you're interested in this, I can get you a quote for an inside, an ocean view, a balcony, or a suite on the coning stem, and then also get you prices on the Zondam, which has insides, ocean views, and balcony suites. Now, are you ready to see all of the South Pacific? Then there is a 94-day Circle Australia, which also includes Hawaii, Fiji, and French Polynesia. And this, if you're just ready to get away and see all of this part of the world, this is the way to do it. It also adds the islands of New Caledonia and it circles Australia. So it features both big cities like Brisbane, which is a gateway to some of the natural wonders of Australia. Um, and then it also features smaller cities like Carnes, which is your gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. There's excursions there. Uh, you're, again, you're going around that north part of Australia. So you'll visit Darwin. Um, there's nearby national parks, a big bustling city, beautiful white sand beaches in that part of Australia. You'll even take a visit, so you'll journey up to Komodo Island in Indonesia, where you can safely view the famous and endangered Komodo dragons. They are the largest living species of lizards in the world. A broom is situated on the north coast of Australia also, and it's known for its rugged coastline, and there's also a nearby crocodile preserve. Now, one of the most famous residents of the Perth area is the, now let me see if I can say it, Pukwoka, <laughs> that, that that's this little guy. They are the world's most photogenic marsupial. Uh, you can see them at Rottnest Island near Perth, or you might want to take in the majesty of the city, or you can go to this nearby desert, it's called Pinnacle Desert, where there's very unusual rock formations. Now, one of the things that gets me most excited about Australia is kangaroos. And when I visited there in 2018, we just spent three days in Sydney. And for obvious reasons, there are no kangaroos in Sydney unless you go to a zoo or so, like yeah. a, a, our Australian nature preserve. Uh, but this cruise visits Kangaroo Island, uh, which offers you a chance to see these unique animals in the wild. Uh, there are several opportunities to see the wild animals. Um, just outside of Adelaide, though, you can visit the famed Barossa Wine region or tour the town or take in the scenic views of this historic town. Now, Melbourne is another great opportunity to visit wineries and see the smaller marsupials known as wallabies. They look like little, little miniature kangaroos. <laughs> um, on, or you can enjoy the highlights of the city. There's even a river cruise tour that you can take in Melbourne. And how about this Tasmanian devil? <laughs> These guys are little solitary carnivores. Uh, they're not nearly as vicious as they're made to be as the, the, the character of Taz in the Bugs Bunny cartoons. Um, they're mostly nocturnal, but they spend most of their day just kind of sleeping in the sun. They're not aggressive towards humans unless you disturb them. Like, so don't, don't mess with the Tasmanian devils, but if they're just hanging out, they're going to be fine. And, and Hobart itself has a very rich history dating back to 1804 when it was first established as a penal colony. So Sydney, on this cruise, the ship will overnight in Sydney, which affords you the opportunity to see the city by day and even by night. And I would say if you can take a harbor cruise at night and see all the, the city illuminated, it is going to be one of the most special experiences of this cruise. I just absolutely love Sydney. We spent three days there in 2018, and it was it's so clean and pleasant, and I felt very safe there. Really, really nice, big city. So the cruise continues on and visits all the important cities in New Zealand, including the, the New Zealand Fjords. So you'll visit Dusky, Doubtful, and Milford Sounds all in one day. And here's another picture of one of those beautiful sounds. Uh, you also visit Dunedin, which celebrates their Scottish heritage. And this is where you can visit castles, breweries, as well as uh, see the unique wildlife around it. There's some beautiful natural areas around Dunedin. This is an example. 
And there's actually some penguins in the area. There's the little blue, blue penguin, the yellow-eyed penguin, and the albatross, which obviously is not a penguin, but all of these birds make their home near Dunedin, New Zealand. If you are a Lord of the Rings fan, then Wellington is your chance to visit Hobbit Town, or you can take a cable car ride. It takes you up to a wildlife preserve where they have a lot of the endemic birds and animals of New Zealand, like this cute little kiwi guy. Um, and if still, another opportunity for Lord of the Rings people is just outside of Christchurch is the beautiful countryside and mountain ranges that stood in for Middle Earth in the famous Lord of the Rings movies. Um, and you can also visit a sheep farm, which of course is one of the most important activities, farming activities in all of New Zealand, very important to their culture. And there's wine tasting opportunities, so yay! <laughs> like those wine tastings. Uh, Napier is near the famed Hawke's Bay agricultural area, which is known for its vineyards and wineries as well. Taronga is where you can see the Earth's Fury with the Hell's Gate geothermal area. Um, it is also an area where there is a Maori cultural center, and about 17% of the population of New Zealand is Maori, you will have an opportunity to immerse yourself in the historic culture of the Maori, the indigenous people, their Polynesians, um, in either Bay of Islands or Taronga. Bay of Islands is the home of the Watangi Treaty Grounds, which is where you can take part in numerous cultural experiences and enjoy performances and demonstrations by local Maori people. Uh, there's also a cultural center, like I said, in Taronga as well. The cruise ends with an overnight in Auckland, and excuse me, it doesn't end there. Amen. It keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. But it, the cruise has an overnight in Auckland, and that affords you a chance to maybe go further afield. One of the places I recommend is visiting Wahiki Island. They have a it, the whole island is wineries, and they have on hop on hop off wine tasting bus there, so you can visit lots of wineries in the area. And the views and the beauty in that area is is, is really lovely as well. So it does not end in Auckland. You actually continue. You go through French Polynesian, New Cahiba, and then back to San Diego. So it is round trip San Diego. And you get an idea of, of where the pricing is on that. It is 94 days. When you add up how, how much it costs per person per day, you really see that it is an excellent, excellent value for that, for that long cruise. And, you know, Australia, you either got to take a long cruise there or fly there and it's an 18 hour flight. So uh, this is one of the best ways to see Australia. Now I wanna quickly, quickly cover the 2023 Grand African Voyage because it is it still has availability. Um, so I'm just gonna run through it really quickly. Um, you can see the lush garden scenery of Madeira and the Canary Islands of Lanzarote is one of the most stark volcanic islands in the Canary Islands. Uh, you can visit Berber markets in Agadir. You can visit ornate mosques, beaches, in, um, and visit the ancient imperial city in Casablanca. Uh, you visit uh, two parts that were once part of ancient Greece, Greece and Cyprus, Souda and uh, Limassol. Uh, you also transit the Suez Canal, which interestingly enough is sea level, so it does not have any locks like the Panama Canal does. Um, the beaches in this part of the world are some have some of the most spectacular scuba diving and snorkeling. Um, also near Sharm el Sheikh, you can visit St. Catherine's Monastery, which is built on the site that is believed to be the site near Mount Sinai where Moses received the Ten Commandments. And from Savaka, which is Luxor, basically, you can visit the Valley of the Kings and see a lot of the ancient Egyptian uh, statues, relics temples, all those kind of important buildings. This is the one that I, is on my bucket list. Absolutely, I need to get to Petra. If you have seen Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you know that the last part of the movie was filmed there in Petra. This city was lost to civilization for over a thousand years and uh, only discovered, I believe it was by an explorer in the 1800s who rediscovered it. It was completely built in the desert and really a fascinating place. Um, this African cruise also it allows you to explore some Indian Ocean islands, including the Seychelles and Madagascar, which is famous for its leaping lemurs. Um, and then one of the oldest continuously uh, in inhabited human settlements in the world is Zanzibar. Uh, it was once 
colonized by the Portuguese. It later became a British protectorate. The city is known for its spice trade, its five-star resort, its playful dolphins, and there is even a red Colombo monkey preserve right near there. Now, in Maputo, Mozambique, this is your opportunity if you are interested to join a three to five day overland safari. So you get off the ship, you do this excursion through Holland, America, you do this overland safari and you rejoin the ship. Um, you get to visit Kruger National Park in, in South Africa. You'll enjoy a five-star experience where you're gonna see the big five. You will see the, the buffalo, the elephant, the leopards, the lions, and the rhino all in this part of Africa during the safari experience. Um, if you choose not to do that, um, in Durban, there is also a chance to vis visit beautiful sites like the, the spectacular waterfall. Uh, there's also a chance to um, go to an African performance by the native Gasa clan in South Africa. And this is a very famous group that performs kind of the, their very traditional dances and performances. Um, in Cape Town, South Africa, you can learn about the history and the defeat of apartheid. You can visit a colony of South African penguins. You can visit an ostrich farm and even do wine tasting. There's so much to do at this spectacular town right at the very tip of Africa. As you head up the west coast of Africa, you'll visit two scenic ports in, in Namibia. And then you also visit Angola and Gambia, uh, where you can see monkeys, baboons, array of, an array of exotic animals. Um, you can visit the volcanic landscapes on the Cape Verde Islands and learn about the cul culinary traditions in these islands. Then you'll sail across the Atlantic where you'll be welcome back to the US and the US territory of Puerto Rico. And then you'll continue on to Fort Lauderdale to end your, your African uh, circumnavigation. Again, look at the pricing for the ocean view. Um, I can price it out for you, you know, get, do a quote for you for the inside cabins. And of course the balconies or suites are gonna be more. Now, the Grand South American uh, cruise also has availability. It's 73 days round trip Fort Lauderdale and um, I want you to see, it visits a lot of beautiful places in the Caribbean. You have a full transit of the Panama Canal. Um, then you visit Monta, Ecuador and Guaquil, Ecuador. And you can learn about the Panama hats. They actually come from Monta, Ecuador, or you can tour the local area of Guaquil. Or you have the opportunity here to join an overland excursion that is going to take you both to the Galapagos and Machu Picchu. So if those destinations have been on your list and you just don't want to fly down to South America, this is a great opportunity to vote, visit those places as well. Uh, the cruise ship will continue on to Peru, where you visit these three stops. I believe that the one of the tours will meet up. I believe it's in Lima because the ship overnights in Lima, but it could even be in General San Martin. I'm not exactly sure how long those tours are. Um, then you head on to Chile. You visit several of these beautiful ports in Chile, but the ones I am, get most excited about are uh, Punta Arenas, which is right on the Magellan Straits. And then you sail through the Chilean fjords and you have an opportunity to visit either the Amalia uh, Glacier or the Brujo, Brujo Great Glacier. My Spanish is terrible. Um, but again, beautiful, beautiful tidewater glacier experiences uh, that, you're, that you're not going to get traveling any other way than on a cruise ship. You visit Ushuaia, Argentina, and this is actually my own picture I took of this beautiful place in 2020. Such a beautiful, beautiful place. It's also known as the end of the world, uh, Tierra, del, Tierra del Fuego, which is Land of Fires, and Fin del Mundo are the two nicknames for Ushuaia. Uh, then you have the Antarctic experience on this cruise. So these are actually my own pictures that I took of Antarctica in 2020 and 2023. Um, it's, it's, you get uh, several days of a spectacular, four days of spectacular scenic sailing around the White Continent. It just is truly awesome to see nature this way. 
Again, here's another one of my pictures. This is a picture in the Falkland Islands where you can visit the most accessible colony of king penguins in the world. And this is at Bluff Cove. You can see those are just absolutely beautiful creatures. You can enjoy Tanat wine in Uruguay, as well as they are in the architecture of its beautiful cities. So there's two cities in Uruguay that you visit. You will also do an overnight in Argentina. That will give you an opportunity to see this women's bridge all lit up at night, one of the most spectacular sights in Buenos Aires. Uh, be sure to pick up a World Cup soccer jersey. Uh, that was the hot souvenir this year because they won the World Cup. Um, you can visit the 20th century immigrant neighborhood of La Boca, as well as the Playa Mayor with its fam famed presidential palace, the Casa Rosada, where you can just picture Ava Perón giving one of her speeches uh, uh, from the balcony of, of that, the president's residence. You also get to explore Rio de Janeiro, again with an overnight. So you not only get to explore the city during the day, but you see this beautiful city all lit, lit up at night. Uh, the Christ the Redeemer statue is, is well illuminated, one of the most spectacular sites, and also the Sugarloaf Mountain. Just, you know, all the things we think about when we think about the beautiful city of Rio. And it's so exciting because this is one of the ships that can hand, head up the Amazon River, um, where you'll go culminate, the Amazon River trip culminates in Manaus. And this is where the native cultures and the Portuguese architecture really come face to face. It's a major city, but it's deep at the end of the, of the Amazon. The Amazon is a massive river, um, but still the, the, the larger ships can't go up there. So uh, that's why Holland America uses ships like the Zondoms for their, their Amazon river cruises. So this is the 73 day Grand South America cruise. Um, it's round trip from Fort Lauderdale. It starts October 7th of 2023, and there still is availability. So if you're interested, let's get let's get a quote out to you and see if this is something uh, that we can put together for you this year. Um, in 2025, they're going to have a little shorter version that's going to take you to the Amazon, and this is the legendary Amazon Explorer. Again, you'll visit some Caribbean islands. This picture is the beautiful island of St. Lucia. Each Caribbean island has a little bit different character. They're all fun to visit, beautiful places. Um, it also visits uh, French Guiana, which is one place that I have never been to. So that, that's, that's an exciting place to visit. And again, you get that Amazon River experience where you're going through all the different ports. And again, it overnights in Manaus, uh, and right at the, at the part of the Amazon. Again, here's here's the pricing for this one. Round trip Fort Lauderdale, 21 days. It's on the Zondam. Again, it's that smaller ship that can get up the Amazon River. So very, very exciting way to travel. Now, if you are in the Northeast and you have always wanted to go and see the Caribbean, but you're not big on flying to Florida, this is a perfect escape from you. Um, you visit the beautiful pink sand beaches of Bermuda. Um, Holland America has a private island called Half Moon K, which is absolutely stunning. They have a sign there that says, I wish I could stay there forever. And everybody stay here forever. Everybody takes a picture by that sign because it is so beautiful. Um, you have nearly a private experience in Grand Turk, in Turks and Caicos. Uh, there is a fully developed uh, beach, uh, like beach resort that's right there in the, the port area of, of, of uh, Turks and Caicos, a beautiful area to visit. Uh, you can enjoy the arid Dutch islands of Aruba and Curacao with their beautifully colored buildings and just spectacular waters. Great for snorkeling and uh, scuba diving. You do a partial transit of the Panama Canal on this cruise. So you go through the Atlantic Locks, you go into the Guatan Lake, and then you go back through the Atlantic, Lock, Atlantic Locks later that day. You'll visit the nearby city of Cologne, where you can take further excursions to explore the Panama Canal infrastructure and learn more about it. Um, you also might just enjoy the, visiting the city of the city, or maybe going out into the rainforest to see some of the beautiful animals and flora and fauna in that area. Closer to home, you'll enjoy Key West, which is Florida's most picturesque island. And then you'll also visit the island of Bimini, which is part of the Bahamas, but it's really just off the coast of Florida. It's very, I think it's closer to Florida than it is the rest of the Bahamas. 
Uh, you'll visit the Space Coast to learn about the history of NASA and the beauty of Cape Canaveral. And then you return back to Boston. So for people in the Northeast that want to do a Caribbean cruise, this is a wonderful opportun opportunity to do it without flying at all. And again, you see the pricing over there. That's based on an ocean view category. So um, if you're interested in doing that and want to get more detailed pricing, give me a call. I'll give you all the details. Now, Japan. I have to tell you, since I went to a travel agent convention and the the Japan tourism did a presentation. I have been wanting to go to Japan and this is a great way to do it. So you first start off with Alaska where you visit the city of Juneau. So it starts in Seattle. You sail up to Alaska, you visit Juneau. You can go visit the Mendenhall Glacier or maybe the newly remodeled Alaska Museum which is right there in the capital. You also visit the Hubbard Glacier. It stretches 76 miles from the summit of Mount Logan all the way to the Yucatan Bay or Yakutat Bay. Uh, the Hubbard Glacier is one of the most impressive of all the glaciers in Alaska. Sitka is where they, the transfer ceremony took place for, for Seward's Folly or the Alaska Purchase. Um, of course, it turned out to be a pretty good deal for, for the United States when we bought Alaska from Russia. Uh, the Kodiak Islands is home to the largest version of the grizzly bear. They're known as Kodiak bears, but they really are just another, just a big grizzly bear. Um, and they can be as large as polar bears. Dutch Harbor is the number one commercial fishing port in the United States. Now that surprised me, but I guess there is a lot of commercial fishing going on up in that part, the Bering Sea part of Alaska. Now, um, Japan, these are a couple of beautiful places in the North Island of Japan. Um, Koshiro, which is known for its marshlands, and it also has a massive public fish market. And Hakodate is a nature lover's paradise with gardens, and it even in the wintertime, it even gets uh, snow. Tokyo may be the friendliest big city in the world. The locals are known to be always polite and friendly, eager to practice their English, and they always are, are go out of their way to help visitors find their way if they look lost. Um, from the lights of the big city to the beautiful Shinto and Buddhist temples, this city is a wonder of both like modern architecture and historical charm. Kobe. So if you're taking in the sights of the big city or maybe enjoying their famous beat, it's certainly a delightful place to visit. Kochi, Japan is home of beautiful temples. Um, also water sports are very popular there and traditional Japanese experiences like these traditional Japanese fishing nets that you see in this picture. So if you wanna take in a little bit of history, um, this cruise offers, offers an opportunity to kind of see both uh, the, the beginning and the end of World War II. Um, and uh, Hiroshima, of course, is one of the sites where our bombing of Hiroshima led to the end of World War II. And you can visit uh, the historic monument to that. You can also see the beautiful city that's been rebuilt since then. In Fukuoka and Sakai Mini Minato, <laughs> I am not good with these names, um, there's beautiful temples where you can see a reclining Buddha in Fukuoka and enjoy, there's kind of a lively pop art culture and Sakai Minato. My, oh, my Japanese is terrible. I gotta have somebody help me with my pronunciation. So you can step back into time with one of the most well-preserved Edo era uh, villages. Uh, the Edo era was from the 1600s to the 1860s in Japan. And that's a, a special district in, the, in Kanazawa. And you can also visit the beautiful city of Toyama known for its delectable seafood. Ishigaki is in Okinawa, Japan. And of course, we all know that that's where Mr. Miyagi was from in The Karate Kid, but it's famous for its emerald green beaches and beautiful white sands. A little bit more of World War II history. You can do a scenic sailing by Iwo Jima and the Midway Islands. And these are some of the most famous battle sites in the Pacific theater. Uh, Midway Island is now a bird preserve and the only people allowed to visit are conservationists. So it's a very protected area now. Um, you continue your journey through history with a visit to Pearl Harbor, or you can just relax on the beaches of Waikiki. Um, 
And the overnight provides you an opportunity for an island luau, maybe go to the, to the Polynesian Cultural Center, lots of different things you can do in Oahu. So here's a look at that itinerary, 53 days, round trip Seattle, September 1st of 2024, and a look at the pricing. Again, when you, under, when you think about how long the cruise is, it really is an excellent value for this pricing. Now, I want to include this one. There's very limited availability, but I do want to highlight this Arctic itinerary. Most of the categories are waitlisted, but with it being uh, uh, basically a year away, there will be plenty of people who have to change their plans. So if we get you waitlisted, I feel almost certain that you will be able to get on this cruise. It visits Ketchikan, Alaska. Um, it visits Wrangell, Alaska. And it also visits Prince uh, William Sound, which is one of the most beautiful areas and has really recovered very nicely since the Valdez disaster in the 1980s, I believe it was. Um, it also visits uh, College Fjord. And each one of these glaciers is named for a, a Northeastern college. So that's why it gets his name College Fjord. The cruise goes all the way up into the Arctic Circle right here by Little Diomede Island. And this island and this island are something like 23 hours apart because <laughs> this, is, this is tomorrow and this is today uh, in those two little islands there. Little Diomede and Big Diomede. Yep, yep. And it also visits Glacier Bay, which is one of the most spectacular places in all of Alaska. Uh, it's so famed because an explorer in the seven, early 1700s sailed by, it, sailed by it, and the glacier was all the way to what's now the mouth of the bay. And 30 years later, that glacier had receded all the way back, creating the beautiful Glacier Bay. So like I said, most categories are waitlisted, but with this cruise over your way, I am certain that if this is something you really want to do, we just need to get you waitlisted and get you on the list. We will get you on, on this cruise. Um, so absolutely amazing itinerary, your chance to see a really extensive part of Alaska, including Kodiak, Homer, Seward, Anchorage, Juneau, Sitka. I mean, really extensive Alaska cruise. You now, this one in 25. <laughs> yeah, you, now in 2024, if you want to sail all the way around the world, you will cover many of the places that we have already covered in this presentation. It is their 128-day Grand World Cruise. It's round trip from Fort Lauderdale on the Zyder Dam, and it starts on January 3rd. And there you can see from the map, just kind of look at it and see all the places it goes. But I'm going to give you a couple of the highlights. Um, Hawaii, Japan, Mumbai, Petra, Abu Dhabi, Jerusalem, ancient Ephesus, which we, hadn't, we haven't covered so far. Um, that is ancient Ephesus as in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and it is continually being excavated. It is one of the most spectacular sites that I have seen in the ancient world. Really, really amazing, amazing uh, excavation and restoration that they're doing there. Uh, you go to Athens and then also Malaga, Spain. So here's a look at that cruise, the 128-day Grand World Cruise. Um, it may just be your thing. It's, you'll see, that, again, that it visits many of the places that we've talked about. So this is something that you're interested in. Please give me a call. I'll get a quote out to you right away. Now, 2025 World Cruises have also just been announced. And there are a lot of special promotions going on. Uh, you get the surf if you book early. So you've got to book by June of 2024, but really for the best selection of cabins, now's the time to book. Um, you get an air credit, you get um, transfers at the Fort Lauderdale Airport, um, you get up to $2,000 per person onboard credit, uh, laundry and dry cleaning, uh, you get a liquor set. So it really depends on what kind of cabin you're in. The suites get more benefits than, say, the inside cabins. So I can give you the complete list of benefits by doing the early booking um, if you just reach out to me. And again, here's a look at that itinerary. 124 days, round trip from Fort Lauderdale. Visit some of the places we've already talked about, like um, like Cape Town, you go through the Panama Canal. A new place that is not, we haven't talked about, is Easter Island. 
French Polynesian, you get to see a little bit of Australia, uh, you get to visit the Seychelles, again, Africa, you get to Aqaba, that's where you get to go visit Petra, and again, it has a little moon there, so that means it's overnight. Civitavecchia, which is Rome, again, overnight there, a really good chance to, to extensively tour Rome. And then you finish up in Lisbon as your last stop in Europe and then head back to Fort Lauderdale. An amazing 124 night itinerary. And then 2025, uh, here's a, a little of those highlights that I just spoke about. Uh, They're going to have a grand rendezvous where both this circumnavigation world cruise and the pole to pole world cruise will both meet up in Barcelona. Uh, so again, very, very interesting itinerary that, that you have uh, visiting all these wonderful places around the world. Um, here's a look at the pricing, give you an idea of, of what it's priced like, really a good value if you are considering, um, you know, taking an extensive world cruise. Um, other cruise lines that offer similar experiences can be as much as twice as much as this. So the other grand world cruise that they're offering in 2025 is the 133 day pole to pole cruise. And uh, again, you can kind of see it's a combination of a lot of the a lot of the cruises that we have talked about that are that are some of those grand voyages. Uh, these are some of the highlights. Again, you get to do the Panama Canal, circumnavigate South America. You get that Antarctic experience. You get the Amazon River. You get to visit West Africa. You do that Barcelona rendezvous, Iceland, Greenland, Canadian Maritimes, the far north reaches of, of Norway. That's when you're going to be inside the Arctic Circle. So a really amazing pole to pole itinerary. And this will give you a little idea of where the pricing is on this one for the 103 day, 33 day round trip from Fort Lauderdale. And now I'm going to have Amanda jump in and talk about the current promotions with Holland America. So we have some really neat promotions that are going to be happening for uh, you to take advantage of. So on our, uh, this actually comes out a little later this month, but this is a wonderful promotion for you to take advantage of with a reduced deposit. We're going to have free prepaid gratuities, which is a huge savings that we don't normally have either. Uh, so this is going to be a big savings for you. You get that have it all as well, which is really going to make your trip very inclusive, which is fantastic because it gives you the prepaid gratuities, gives you the internet, it gives you some short excursion credits. It also gives you the drink package, which doesn't just include alcohol, it includes specialty coffees, water, sodas. So it really just makes it so easy for you. We also give you opportunities to get out there and try some of those specialty restaurants as well. So a lot of neat opportunity for you there. So some neat opportunities. Suzanne also is able to get you some great different benefits as well, depending on the itinerary and dates. So if there's something that you're interested in, definitely reach out because we will definitely look at what is the best price. What's going to make this the best and most inclusive trip for you to take advantage of? For joining us today on this webinar, we also wanted to make sure that you were getting something very exclusive for just taking the time out, learning a little bit more about working with Suzanne, some of our great itineraries in Holland America in general. So this here is going to be additional shipboard credit that's going to be available to you for attending this webinar. So it does increase based on the number of days that you are sailing along with which cabin category you get. So just something extra, something special to buy something for yourself, maybe do a nice spa treatment, maybe take advantage of another specialty dining event, or of course, you can spend all that money in gelato if you are on one of our Pinnacle class ships. <laughs> so lots of opportunity there for you to take advantage of. So please, please let us know if there's something you're interested in, and we can definitely look at all the great advantages for Bookie through Suzanne. I know we covered a lot. There was a lot of different destinations and I know it probably zipped by. 
So if you're interested in learning more about anything, any of these, I am happy to do a phone call consultation. Uh, we can both pull up stuff on the computer and look at it together just to, to see, make sure that, you know, you're seeing everything, all the opportunities they are there, that are available with these cruises. I'm going to, you know, help, help you understand, you know, um, which one might be the best fit for your needs, what there is to do in port, what the onboard experience is like. Um, I am here for you. I am your resource for that. And I'm not a call center. I am your personalized vacation planner. So if you give me a call, I'm going to spend as much time as you need to kind of go through everything and help you help you make the decision if you would like to, uh, you know, do the splurge and, and really enjoy one of these amazing, amazing extended itineraries from Holland America. So um, I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then we will go ahead and open it up to any questions that folks might have. And if I need to refer back to a slide, I can share, I can scroll back to it and then share the screen again. So well, Richard, you're, if you want to ask a question, you're going to be muted. So you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, so I have to unmute yourself if you have a question. And Shannon just joined us. I think she's, <laughs> was an hour late, but we're just. Uh... Yeah, I got, for some reason, I put it on my calendar an hour late. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's Sorry recorded. So, so we'll send you the recording. No worries. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Okay, is there anybody who has any other questions? Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and end the recording and then uh, for those people who want to view it, we'll, we'll post it up on, our, on our, um, our YouTube page. So Steve, go ahead and close it out.